Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has praised the country's armed forces, days after the Ukrainian troops' unprecedented attack on Russia's Kursk region. Everyone sees that the Ukrainian army knows how to surprise and how to achieve results. This was proven in the battlefield where our soldiers not only withstood the overwhelming force of the invaders, but also destroyed it in the way necessary to protect Ukraine, our state and our independence," the Ukrainian president said in his speech on Thursday during the presentation of the Army Plus application. Zelensky's speech came two days after hundreds of Ukrainian troops supported by armored combat vehicles and tanks attacked Russia's Kursk region on the border. However, Zelensky did not mention the Kursk operation in his speech today. Ukrainian troops' incursion into Kursk was the largest attack on Russian territory since the start of Russia's invasion in February 2020. The incident also marked the first case of Russia being invaded by another country since World War II. Russian President Vladimir Putin described the attack as Ukraine's large-scale provocation. According to the Washington-based Institute for the Study of War, Ukrainian troops had advanced as much as 10 kilometers into Russian territory as of Wednesday. Russian President Vladimir Putin has made his first remarks about the Ukrainian army's attack on Russia's Kursk region, describing the assault as a large-scale provocation. Putin made the remarks one day after the attack, during the Wednesday meeting with the heads of security agencies, the Defense Ministry, the General Staff and the Federal Security Service FSB. Addressing the meeting, Putin accused Ukraine of firing indiscriminately from various types of weapons, including missiles, at civilian buildings, residential buildings and ambulances. Immediately after our meeting, I will have a meeting with the heads of law enforcement agencies, the Ministry of Defense, the General Staff, the FSB and I will hear another report from my colleagues on what is happening in the Kursk region," he stated. The Russian leader added that he has given instructions to the acting governor of the Kursk region, Alexei Smirnov, to provide the necessary assistance to the region's residents. Earlier, Putin appointed First Deputy Prime Minister Denis Mancharov to supervise this work. Russian Defense Ministry on Tuesday stated that up to 300 Ukrainian troops, including 11 tanks and more than 20 armored combat vehicles, attacked its Kursk region. According to the Russian Health Ministry, 24 people were injured, including six children. The U.S. has deployed a dozen F-A-18 fighters to a military base in the Middle East. This move is part of the Pentagon's efforts to protect Israel from potential attacks by Iran and its affiliates, reports the Times of Israel. According to an American official, the F-A-18 aircraft and the E-2D Hawkeye reconnaissance plane departed from an aircraft carrier in the Gulf of Oman and arrived at an undisclosed base. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin ordered the increased military presence in the region due to concerns about escalation in the Middle East following the recent killings of a senior Hezbollah commander in Lebanon and the Hamas political leader in Iran, likely as a result of Israeli strikes. Both groups are known to be supported by Iran. The U.S. Navy's deployment is expected to be temporary, with an F-22 fighter squadron en route from its home base in Alaska to the same base. Approximately a dozen F-22s are anticipated to arrive in the Middle East in the coming days. The Times of Israel reports that it is unclear how long all the aircraft will remain at the base together, with the duration likely depending on developments in the coming days. Earlier, Pentagon spokeswoman Sabrina Singh told reporters Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin will be directing multiple force movements to provide additional support to Israel and increase protection for U.S. troops in the region. The White House, in a statement, said President Joe Biden reaffirmed his commitment to Israel's security against all threats from Iran, including its proxy terrorist groups Hamas, Hezbollah and the Houthis. It's currently not clear what form an Iranian attack could take and whether it could be as significant as the April drone and missile attack, which was largely intercepted by Israel and its allies. 
The United States is doing everything possible to make sure that this situation does not boil over. White House Deputy National Security Advisor John Finer said in an interview with ABC, Part of what makes back-channel messages and conversations effective is that they need to stay private, Finer told ABC. So I won't speak to the details of the diplomatic activity that is underway other than to say in close coordination and conjunction with our Israeli allies and other partners and allies in the region.